Hello and welcome back. And that's right, we're continuing with our best of the year with today's video, the best cheap NAS of 2025. Cheap, value, economy, penny pinching, call it what you will. This is about spending as little as possible, but still getting the hell away from cloud and streaming services and subscriptions and moving on to your own bare metal server solution. But we've got to have some rules because let's be honest, my version of cheap, your version of cheap, is version of cheap, it could all be different. So here are our rules. Number one, every single NAS that was considered for this video had to have been available for under $249 and it had to have been either from a recognized global retailer or it had to be available from their own website. Again, for under $249. Next up, it has to be a solution that arrives with the CPU, memory, and is pre-built. No DIY mobos. And although I was thinking about uh, NAS solutions that either include uh, an OS drive or an operating system, and I'll be honest with you, four out of five of the NASs I'm gonna talk about today still have that included. I decided not to include that rule here because a lot of users because of inflation and because of the cost of things, although I've done a video like this every year with 249, what you get for your money has changed. So again, these aren't all gonna be turnkey, but I will say four out of five of them still arrive with a storage drive and an operating system. And the one that doesn't comes pretty darn close. But without further ado, let's crack on with number one. Now this is the Ugreen DH2300, an eight core arm, technically two four core arm, four gig DDR4 two bay NAS solution. This is probably the lowest price entry into the Ugreen NAS ecosystem. And it still manages to support around 70, 75% of the range of applications and services that the brand provides. On top of that, it has a small area of 32 gig eMMC storage inside that houses the operating system. So you don't need to go out and buy a fresh drive for that OS. Now I will say, Installing a third party OS on this, you're not gonna have much fun with that. This is an ARM architecture. And also, although it does have an HDMI output, which is surprisingly rare, by the way, at least until 2025 on ARM powered NAS devices, this is very much a solution for those that wanna get in bed with UGOS, Ugreen to NAS operating system. Now, there is a four bay variation of this that has appeared in other videos. And I'll be honest with you, if you can stretch the bit of extra money, I would definitely recommend uh, the four bay device because it has twice the amount of memory, has twice the amount of network bandwidth, and it is effectively double everything in every single regard. This one, the fault I've got to say, because price wise, it isn't just under 249. In many places, it's sub 199. I've seen it as low as 188 in some places. It has to be said that price does come with compromise. For example, the network connection is a single gigabit connection there, which is a little disappointing. Also, there's only one network port there as well. It arrives with four gig of memory, which is still much more than most brands in turn key provide at this price. Go, there are other options out there if you're prepared to spend another 50 to to $100 more. But if you're trying to weigh up buying some storage media, maybe a couple of 4TB drives, and you want an out and bought the whole thing to come in at well under $499 without the tax, this is a great option for you at that price point. But do keep in mind that at least at the time of recording, they have disabled the container application in UGOS on this, as when this device rolled out, and you'll see from my reviews link below, that they did have the container, the Docker application running on this system. But because of stability and further testing requirements, they've temporarily disabled it. So hopefully in the future, they'll re-enable that, but do keep that in mind, because that has changed since the review. But still, if you were looking at Ugreen in 2024, 2025, and you want a simple, easy, affordable gateway away from cloud services, as well as setting up your own media server with proprietary applications, this is a great little choice. Talking of brands that have moseyed into the world of network attached storage, we have this. This is the Unify UNAS2. Unify, a year ago, had one NAS in their ecosystem, a crap load of network switches, and a lot of users wondering what next. Fast forward to 2025, and they rolled out a series of different NAS solutions. And for those at the tighter end of the spectrum, trying to save the odd little bunts, this is a fantastic solution. Rocking out at 199. Uh, so again, that's clear $50 less than our threshold there. This arrives with two hard drive bays inside, supporting 3.5 inch media and two and a half inch with an adapter. 
But what makes this interesting is this is a PoE NAS solution. It's got a 2.5 uh, gigabit network connection there. Only the one port, I will say. It also arrives with a four core ARM CPU and four gig of memory. But it's the idea that this, which also, by the way, arrives with a mains PoE adapter, so you don't have to use it with power over ethernet. You can just use it traditional plug in the wall. Gives you the very flexible option of, for those of you that have a PoE switch or even an affordable PO switch, which is pretty darn cheap these days, even at one gigabit per second, this is a great option for you there. It doesn't support certain things. Hot swapping isn't really possible on this. And I will say that at the time of recording, Uni uh, Unify's U Drive uh, software isn't the most fully featured in the market. But for those that are just looking for simple object storage, looking for simple file storage, uh, synchronization with cloud services for backups there, simple USB backups, and ultimately just looking for basic NAS storage, but from a brand they know, the UNAS2 is a great little option there and stupidly affordable. Just keep in mind that if you are someone that's looking for a NAS server for something like Plex, or you're looking to take advantage of cloud service client applications, they, you're going to find it a little bit limited right now on the Unify NAS ecosystem. They're still very much in their early days, but at this price point, it's very hard to beat what you're getting here. Was there really any version of this video that wouldn't include this device? Absolutely not. This is the B-Link ME Mini. It's an as we've spoken about six or seven times this year, and it's kind of broke the mold in what people expect to get for their money. Now it's available at the time of recording from B-Link's own website for around $209. And for that, you get a six bay M.2 NVMe SSD NAS system with two 2.5 gigabit network ports there on the rear, an internal PSU as well, making it extraordinarily compact. Alongside that, it arrives with 16 gig of DDR4 memory. I believe there is a 12 gig version out there as well. And it even arrives with EMMC storage on board for an operating system of your choice. Now, operations, operating system of your choice is a key point there. It doesn't arrive with any OS. It's not traditional turnkey, but at the same time, at that price point, again, somewhere between 40 to in some cases 50 or even $60 price difference. If you go to websites like AliExpress from our threshold, there is just so much to love here. This thing is universally praised across the majority of platforms online. It can get a little hot, but that's largely because underneath this plastic cover is one giant heat sink that all the SSDs are kind of silicon padded against there. It kind of works with an internal cooling system running all the way through it. And even the design aesthetic is just incredibly unique, a pocket size NAS. And all of that added together with it running on the, um, the Intel Twin Lake N150 quad-core Intel processor, meaning things like Plex Media Server Jellyfin, uh, containerization, limited virtualization, file sharing, and more, are all possible here, not only dependent on your operating system of choice, but just on how you want to use it. This has become the home lab darling. And it's gonna be interesting to see next year where B-Link take things moving forward. But at least for now, this thing regularly out of stock because it sells so well, and realistically, never really been off in this studio till now. This is the Zyber Hydra N150. Taking advantage of the same Intel CPU as the B-Link that we just discussed, it also arrives with 16 gig of DDR5 memory, an area of storage for if you want to install your operating system. It also features PCIe Gen 3 times two NVMEs, uh, slots, four of them to be precise. It also has two 2.5 gigabit network ports there on the rear, alongside a bunch of HDMI visual output, and it even runs on USB power, although you will need a 65 watt power brick to do it. Now, this is incredibly similar to this device over here, the GMK Tech G9. And myself included, a lot of us just assumed 
this was just going to be the next upgrade to these because the original GMK Tech G9, you can look online, there's plenty of references to this, has something of a heating problem. Because of those SSD slots being Gen 3 times 2 they generate a decent amount of heat and no amount of fans here, ventilation on the top and limited perforation on the side seemingly dissipated that heat well enough. It overheated a lot. So a little while later, GMK Tech released an upgraded version, slightly larger fan, more ventilation, larger ventilation pad there, and the fans here ramping up ever so slightly. But between these two releases, this device arrived, and I just assumed it was just that same blueprint, and this was a GMK Tech product. Indeed, when you look inside, the fans are labeled GMK Tech. However, this runs cooler. The fans run a fraction quieter, and the base, is a metal panel. The whole base panel there is a heat sink. So that, instead of the plastic that is based on the base of this, further assists the, vent, uh, the heat dissipation and the fans are running over a lined heat sink panel here for better surface coverage and ultimately allowing for much better heat dissipation. So if you were considering the GMK Tech G9, and are concerned about the temperatures, move a little bit over to this side of the table and look it up. Currently, I've only found it on a couple of listings on AliExpress, but also on their own website, and I've seen it as low as 209, but I think at the moment it's around 229 for this one. Ultimately, of the three on the table, although this doesn't quite challenge for me the likes of the ME Mini, I will say for those that prioritize the speed of their SSDs, rather than having more SSDs at a slower speed at three times one, this is a great little option. Our last entry is the Zimmerboard 2 from Icewale. This is actually the second video that they have been in in our best of 2025. And just like my previous video, I've got to tell you, I don't have the device here to hand to show it to you because ever since it arrived here in the studio, we've always put the sodding thing to work. Now, we arrived with the M150 CPU, that's that quad-core Intel, alongside 8 gig of DDR4 memory. There's also a 16 gig option, but we'll get onto that later on. It also arrived with 32 gig of eMMC memory internally for that operating system, but you can flash it and use any other you want. Much like the memory upgraded version, there is also a version where you can get a 64 gig MMC option if you like. It's got a couple of 2.5 gig network ports. It has a couple of SATA connections as well that allow you to add traditional SATA drives via their special adapter. There's USB ports there of course and uh, HDMI output. It's pretty much like any other NAS. However, it's completely fanless. It is a single board with its entire heatsink built in. It even has a PCIe Gen 3 times 4 slot on the side. This is a single board custom server that you can use in the most crazy DIY ways for those of you that are considering getting your own home server, but you don't want a big ugly box to look at. This gives you the option of reusing an old box, old technology. Get yourself an old telly, hollow out the inside, and then stick this inside for the corner of the room. Hell, you can fit this inside any monitor. You can fit this inside a PlayStation 1 case. What I'm saying is, for those that are looking at an affordable, but potentially chic, design for their server that they've got full control over and a bit of a hobby, this is a great option. And it's turnkey as well with Zimmer OS included. An incredibly lightweight but growing in features and functionality operating system. Now right now you can get hold of this device for about $290, $219 pre-order on their own website. It is available on Amazon for a bit more, but if you wait till next year, it might go up as high as 269 or maybe 279 for the base model. There is that 16 gig and larger EMMC model as well. The Zimmerboard 2 for me is one of the coolest products that I played with in 2025. And it just so happens to be sodding affordable. This toes the line with Zimmer OS between DIY solutions like Unraid and TrueNAS, and turnkey solutions like Synology and QNAP. It's not as feature rich as some of those larger turnkey solutions, but it's a damn sight more user friendly for some than TrueNAS or Unraid or OpenMedium Vault or others. It is not 
as turnkey and easy to set up as some of the solutions I've talked about, but in terms of features, functionality, and just sheer DIY fun, the Zimmerboard 2 has earned its place on the cheapest NAS of 2025 list. But there you go, those are the best, most cost-effective, lowest price, cheapest, watch in the old bunts solutions in the world of NAS in 2025 for those who want to hop away from the cloud and hop away from streaming services. Now, if you found this video helpful, and if you're gonna shop at any of the stores listed in the description, and you actually want to support what we do, make sure those three things are true, using the links in the description to go to the stores to get hold of the devices we talked about today, will result in a small commission coming here to NAS Compares, and it allows me and Eddie, it's just us doing this, to keep doing what we do. It's a passive way for you to support creators like us, and it doesn't cost you a dime more. Now, we've linked to the guides and reviews that we've done on all of today's devices, as well as the article that shows how we decided on the cheapest NAS of the years for this video. If you've got the device that I didn't mention that you want to volunteer for this and maybe we'll adapt it or add it as an honorable mention in the article below, let me know in the comments. But remember the rules about how devices were selected. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching in 2025 and I'll see you next time.